While steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol and then metabolized, broken down by enzymes in our body, peptide hormones are actually synthesized from DNA in our body. So it's a very different mechanism of production in addition to the different mechanism of action. So here's um, three examples of peptide hormones again of different sizes. They're all made up of more than one peptide. So they're called peptide hormones, polypeptides, and can be, can be proteins. That's if they fold into a tertiary structure. We're not gonna worry about those details. Um, basically they can be different sizes. They're all polypeptides, amino acids linked together. So it should make sense that they are synthesized from your DNA. So this is the synthesis process. Your DNA is inside your nucleus, of course. I don't have that drawn right here. This is the process. So DNA is transcribed into RNA. This might be initiated by a steroid hormone. It's a process that you know, happens in your body all the time. So this RNA is then going to be made into a protein. So we've got DNA, RNA, protein, just like usual. Now, this protein is going to be, and that happens in the rough ER um, with ribosomes, that translation into a protein. Mm -hmm. This protein is going to go into a transport vessel. It's going to be exocytosed, exocytosis. Um, so this transport vesicle is going, is going to contain, what is this little thing right here? I'm actually going to make it a different color in here we can track it. Once it's a protein, I'm going to make it green. This is our little protein inside our secretory or transport vesicle. The Golgi, the, I'm sorry, the Golgi apparatus is going to prepare it for secretion. So it becomes a secretory vesicle there. Um, don't need to know that besides the point is you should remember the Golgi apparatus is involved in vesicle secretion. So that makes sense. And that protein polypeptide can then be exocytosed, secreted out into outside of the cell through the cell membrane to go into the bloodstream and have its effects. So what's really cool is these peptide hormones are encoded by our genes. So you have a gene for the vasopressin hormone, for CRH, um, for ACTH, these are all ones you'll see. And, they're, um, and so they can be regulated whether they're produced or not. The one last thing I wanna say about their production is that typically these peptide hormones, especially the peptides are synthesized, let's say right here, this newly synthesized one as a pro-hormone. What does this mean? This means hormone it's actually synthesized, made up of several different pieces. So I'm trying to draw these different colors here to represent the pro-hormone. What's gonna happen is in the vesicle as part of the um, secretion and ultimately final steps of production of this hormone, it's gonna be chopped up. These are scissors, can you tell? Scissors, scissors, this process is regulated. Um, so the pro-hormone is going to be chopped into its final products. So then in the end, we've got, in this case that I made up, we have three different, oops, that's the wrong one over here. Three different final hormones produced from one gene. So they're regulated kind of together. So just to know that these are um, produced first as pro-hormones that need to be further processed. We won't look at this a whole lot more, but ACTH is actually an example of this. Okay, last thing for peptide hormones is their action on the cell. So clearly these big old things cannot go through the cell membrane. They're gonna bind to membrane receptors. And this is where I wanna detail a little bit more reminding you the steps in a G protein coupled receptor. And typically um, this is the pathway we'll see. So CAMP is the second messenger. Sorry, that's a really light color. So we've got a G protein 
that is activated by the first messenger, the hormone binding. The G protein is going to activate adenylocyclase. Don't really need to worry about this thing. Adenylocyclase is going to convert ATP to CAMP. Here's our second messenger. The other second messenger we have seen, and we'll see briefly again, I think, is calcium can act as a second messenger, which just means the second messenger in this cascade. This is the messenger that can act inside the cell. It can do um, things like activate protein kinase. This is one example of what it can do. CAMP could do potentially other things. It's converting the message from outside of the cell to inside the cell, cellular transduction. Protein kinase can activate, um, phosphorylate other proteins to activate them. So this has all kinds of effects on the cell. And we'll see examples of this um, when we get to, for example, the cardiovascular system um, of the, some of the effects of G protein coupled receptor activation. It depends on the hormone and the receptor bound and what the cell, what the target tissue is. But this is the general idea.